टूडे वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट टाइम डेटा टाइप टाइम इज ऑल्सो अ प्रिमिटिव डेटा टाइप विच जस्ट स्टोर्स द टाइम ऑफ द डे विदाउट स्टोरिंग एनीथिंग अबाउट द डेट सो इट स्टोर्स टाइम इन आवर्स मिनट्स सेकेंड्स एंड मिली सेकेंड फॉर्मेट एंड इट हैज़ अ वैलिड रेंज ऑफ जीरो जीरो आवर्स टू ट्वेंटी थ्री पॉइंट फाइव नाइन ओके सो इट्स अ ट्वेंटी time was not there in apex primitive data types list from the very beginning we had date and we had date time and for the calculations where we just needed the time part of the uh, date we were fetching the time from the date time and then we were doing those calculations and it made all those calculations very complex as well so later on salesforce introduced time as a data type now there are many use cases where we just need time and we will be talking about those use cases shortly but let us first try to see how do we get the time how we display time what is the format of it how do we create the new instance of it and then we will go through the different methods we have in the time okay so i will go back to my salesforce screen and in the salesforce screen we will do the debug the way we have been doing it from the very beginning so time is data, data type let's name it my time or let's call it current time if you need to get the current time you can use the system class system dot now dot time and this will give you the current time system dot debug let's put current time to debug and click on execute now you'll see you'll be able to get the current time it's 12 19 pm okay so you'll be able to see it's hour minute second and millisecond format okay now to create a new instance of time how we do that let's call it time my time and here you have to write time dot new instance and it takes four input params hours minutes second and milliseconds so you can give it something like 13 30 13 30 30 comma let's say Zero and zero. So we are giving seconds and milliseconds as zero, and then we will put a debug log here for this. Okay. So let's. Okay. Let's execute this part. You will be able to see that you got the same time as the output. You have created the new instance of the time class okay so there are various other methods as well we have in the time class okay if we go back to our ppt we'll see that we have many other methods available as well we will see few of them practically and then we will learn about them we have add hours in a particular time if you want to add few more hours you will be able to do that with the help of add hours method similar to add hours we have add milliseconds add minutes and add seconds as well okay so we will be able to add time in the current time okay or in the time which we have on hand and then we have few methods by which we get the component of our time so a time will have hours seconds minutes milliseconds if you want to fetch a particular part of it like if you just want to have hours out of it you will be able to do that with the help of hours similarly you will be able to get millisecond minutes and second as well and we just saw new instance by which we create the new instance of our time so let us do practical on maybe add hours and hour Let's go back to the Salesforce screen and maybe let's just try to add hours. Okay, so 
system dot I will be adding hours directly so I am going to add my time dot add hours and let's add two hours okay so it's 13 30 it should be 15 30 then okay added time and let's try to execute this and you can see now it's 15 30 so from 1 13 30 it has become 15 30 because we have added two hours in it okay similar to this if i just want to get the hour part of it so what i can do i will again use system.debug and my time dot hour i just want to see the hour part of it just hour and if I execute this I should be able to get 13 because 13 is our real time and 13 is our hour part of the time we have which is my time okay so you'll be able to get hours similarly if you want to get seconds milliseconds or minutes we can also do that so these are some of the methods we have in the time class if you check the time class in apex you will get more details about it different methods and uh, uh, how do we use them if you go to a particular method you'll be able to get the example as well okay so if you want to have more details on it you can go through this uh, developer guide and you will be able to see everything in it now let us talk about something which is not there okay so the real life use cases or the practical use cases of time why it was introduced and because what was the need of it salesforce only introduced something when there is a need of it so there was many scenarios where we just needed the time part of it and that is why salesforce has introduced time so it can be used for business hour validations let's say a service request should only be logged between 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Okay, irrespective of the date, irrespective of the day, every service request in let's say company XYZ should be logged between 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. So in that case, we just need the time component of it. We are not concerned about date. So such kind of scenarios can easily be handled by the time data type. Okay time data type can also be used for appointment scheduling right let's say you have a clinic that clinic uses salesforce and you only want to allow your patient to book appointments within a specific time within a specific time frame so in that case this appointment scheduling can easily be done with the help of this time data type let's say there is a factory there is a manufacturing company who wants to enable the shift management irrespective of the date irrespective of the day let's say they want to have three different shift 8 hour 8 hour 8 hour within 24 hour format they want to have three different shifts that can easily be done with the help of time data type let's say you want to send a reminder you want to send a reminder to your customers every morning 8 am irrespective of the date irrespective of the day irrespective of the business time you want to send a notification to your customers every morning 8 a.m. Perfect use case for the time data type. It can also be used in loan disbursement and banking operations. Certain banks or certain banking operations are only allowed within a specific time window. Like in the, uh, in the working time only these functionalities will be available. So those things can easily be done with the help of time data type. In certain API integrations also the third party expects you to send the time format they they expects you that you will be sending the time component as a separate data type so in such kind of scenarios also time will be very helpful because otherwise you will have to send the date or date time and it will be really difficult to serialize and deserialize and break it into the time zone so it basically helps you do those calculations very easily you also 
can use time data type in SLA or timer logic. Let's say you have an SLA that every service request should be responded within one hour of creation. Now that thing where we just are focused on the time component of it, just concerned about one hour, that can very easily be done with the help of time. I am not saying that this cannot be done without time. This can definitely be done with date and date time as well. But easier would be to use the time data type and do it very easily when we are not concerned about date at all. Okay, so these are some of the use cases uh, when we use time data type and these are not the only use cases. There are n number of use cases. Time is relatively new data type. So in your practical examples, you might not see uh, them uh, as heavily as other data type, but still it is good to know. And in future, you will be seeing time component a lot. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.